Good afternoon, YouTube. What's going on? It's Mesa back at it with some Destiny. All right, guys, another massive article coming out of Game Informer exploring Rise of Iron. This one's titled Three Days Exploring Destiny Rise of Iron. There's lots to get into. I'm going to link it in the description, and we're going to go through and find all the nice nuggets to talk about. So now the first nugget is about what's called Iron Engrams, okay? So this is a sit-down between the uh, three folks that went to go play Rise of Iron at Bungie. So Ben, one of the guys, asked him, what do you think of the new vendors at the peak? Matt goes, we've talked about those new characters a bit, but there's some fun stuff about them. For instance, Lord Saladin has these new Iron Engrams for sale, which reward you with some of the older Year 1 and Year 2 armor sets, which is an ideal option for people who are looking to flesh out their collections. Now, does that mean uh, exotic or does that mean legendary? I'm going to think legendary, okay? I don't know. You guys <laughs> speculate in the comment section. Uh, then he goes on to talk about Shura 4. Cade's buddy, Shura 4, also has some cool stuff connected to him. He has bounties to undertake, like using the battle axe to kill enemies in the Plague Lands or completing a captain encounter in the Archon's Forge. We covered that in the uh, most recent video where you see all of Shiro's bounties on screen. So more than likely, the battle axe will be used in the Archon's Forge, but also probably out there, just like the, maybe like the Scorch Cannon, you could just find it places out in the Plague Lands, okay? Uh, he also says, uh, Shiro also has some class items for sale, which look to me like some of the old Year 1 Iron Banner options. And it's true, if you look in the image there, it does look like the Titan Iron Banner Sash from Year 1. Like the Hunter Mantle of Perun, the Titan Yolders, yeah, <laughs> Yolders Iron Sash, and the Warlock's Fellwinter's Iron Bond. People will be happy for another shot at those, I think. Now, they did mention uh, something about Radiant Treasures, but nothing in detail, okay? It looks like those are going to be, we'll be able to get those in uh, either microtransactions, obviously through Eververse, but also in-game missions, okay? But uh, we don't know that much more about those Radiant Treasures. However, we do get some speculation, okay? So he goes on to say, I'm not entirely sure about everything that you can get from those Radiant Treasures, but I know that among other things, you can get visual customization options for your exotic weapons. So that's obviously ornaments, okay? Uh, I'm not sure if just some of those, if all, of the exotic weapons have those new ornaments. But I saw options for the Zao Supercell, Invective, Telesto, Mita Multitool, and the new Kavostov, and I'm assuming there's more. So there you have it right there. Supercell, Invective, Mita. Uh, putting ornaments on Mita? <laughs> How much different can you make it look? That's all I ever use. You guys make fun of me. I just, I love Mita Multitool. What am I going to do? Now something new coming to Eververse. Okay, check this quote out. Eververse has another cool little feature. New artifacts for your guardian that seemed pretty clearly targeted to folks making in-game movies. The one I saw, quote unquote, the Golden Age lens, lets you equip the artifact and change the camera filter for your in-game view. And it added a sepia tint to it. I also saw one that added a blue tint. Bungie implied that there are just a few colors, but it's still pretty neat. They're definitely presented as a cosmetic, can't speak, Cosmetic choice, not something that would compete with the powerful Iron Lord artifact. So something new they're going to introduce with Eververse, obviously for people who like to make montages or like to do uh, in-game movie type stuff. And I'm certainly probably going to pick up a few of those. Now, there's a pretty cool quote in here that kind of talks about the Plague Lands and what to expect. So I'm just going to read this verbatim. I think it's fair to say that players should keep their expectations in check about the visual variety. It's absolutely an extension of Old Russia. Even so, the new snowy effects and SIVA presence really give it a new flavor. There's this area called the Lord's Watch that is this massive bluff that overlooks the whole zone, and you can see some of the places you're going to visit. There's this area where there's a ground tanker, and in one spot you can see the ship torn open and splicers are sniping at you from the raised decks of the Breed ship. Also like the bunker area, which feels a lot like a World War II missile silo. There's a massive foundry, which has a ball torn from one of the Golden Age colony ships, and the splicers are trying to retrofit it. Always off in the distance is this big flaming fortress, which is where you find Archon's Forge. Remember, Archon's Forge, that's the new uh, player-activated public event that's kind of a cross between Court of Oryx and also the Prison of Elderly People. Now, I'm going to pull this quote because it's pretty cool explaining what SIVA is, okay, or actually where it came from. So, Matt goes, at a couple of points in the story, the characters refer to SIVA as Iron's Bane, which I love. It has this Pandora's box quality to it. It's a self-organizing nanotechnology, like you said, but it needs a director. It literally can become anything. It helped enable the great expansion of humanity's golden age. The story team told me that within the fiction, SIVA is actually the evolution of the matter encryption technology of Engrams, but on a much vaster scale. As it turns out, putting it in the hands of these fallen splicers isn't a great idea. 
Now they talk a little bit more about things you could find and explore in the Plague Land. So he says, I also like the idea of playing up Fallen Splicers as these space pirates. I think that's why you find these hidden caches around the Plague Lands. I'm assuming that those are those mimic chests that we talked about in a previous video. It's like pirate booty, and sometimes these chests are trapped with mines and other bad stuff. I also came across new public events, like a fight against a Splicer Walker tank and some other ambient events like one spot where I saw the hive ambushing some splicers. Because I'm a lore enthusiast, I'm excited about tracking down the new hidden fragments in the Plaguelands. Some of those are tied to the new Galahorn questline, but also ties back to the Rise of Iron record book completion. Now we also got some clarification of why we saw Bannerfall. Remember we saw there was an image where you saw us fighting PBE, Fallen Splicers, uh, in Bannerfall. Well, it says, taking a cue from the subclass quest of the Taken King, a couple of the new Gallahorn missions go to establish PvP zones, Bannerfall and Skyshock, I believe, and present new PvE fights and also gives a little more story and context around the weapon. There is also an amazing opportunity to try out your new toy once you have it. Then we also get some more clarification on what it was like to play in the Archon's Forge, the new player-activated public event. He goes, it's fun. I always like the Court of Oryx, and this feels a bit like that, but the play sessions are a little longer than those usually were. It also reminded me of Gears of War Horde mode because you're fending off waves of fallen enemies that spawn out of these domes scatter across the forge. I like the look of the place with all the molten metal. It's also cool that other players can join you if they wish. There also is an interesting risk-reward element in that. If you die and get kicked back out to the entrance, which is locked, so it's usually better to wait for your partner to revive you and not just die. Did you know the background on Archon Forge? Why is it there? One of the designers told me that there's a story basis for the Archon Forge. It also plays off the Fallen hierarchy system. A Fallen Foot Soldier has to scavenge for a piece of SIVA technology to prove his worth to his house, and then he offers it up to the Archon Forge in order to earn his right to fight and improve his standing. So, in effect, when you find these SIVA pieces that trigger the start of the fight, you're stomping all over Fallen Ascension rituals. Now, the Archon's Forge also, he mentions in here, is you can earn light-capped class items, okay? Uh, he goes, some of those challenges go pretty hard, too. We didn't make it all the way to the boss, meaning Archon's Forge, but Bungie did say that the Archon's Forge challenge ends in a boss battle. However, if you don't kill the enemies fast enough, you could time out and not even make it to the boss. It seemed like you need to be constantly dealing damage. Thankfully, if you manage to complete these challenges, you can earn new Archon's Forge specific armor and weapons, and they said it's one of the ways to earn light-capped class items. We also get clarification that, and I think we already knew this, that Iron Lord and Iron Banner gear are two totally different sets. They're similar, but the Iron Banner armor has a little bit more of a militaristic vibe. Now they go in to talk about all of the new weapons, new armor, nothing detailed, but it brings up the fact that we're going to need vault space. And right now it says that there are no plans, it said when they asked the developers, that as of right now there are no plans to increase the vault space so I'm pretty bummed out about this guys because my vault is near full right now and I don't want to start deleting stuff until Rise of Iron comes out and they need more legendary marks. Now they talk a little bit about PvP which we know the new game mode is called Supremacy which is like kill confirmed, you kill a guardian and they drop a crest. So they did say that the uh, different guardians based on Hunter, Titan, Warlock will drop a different type of crest. Uh, I'm going to quote him here, he goes, you bury your crest into battle as a matter of honor. So in effect, the idea behind Supremacy is maintaining your honor and stealing the honor of your opponent. Now, they didn't talk too much about Trials of Osiris, they just did mention a little bit about ornaments. Uh, he goes, those ornaments to adjust your Trials armor are going to be hard to come by. I guess they're going to be rewards for going flawless. That's going to be a challenge. By the way, that same mastery sentiment guides the raid ornaments. Bungie suggested that those may come from challenge mode chests in Wrath of Machine. They talk a little bit about the new strike called the Wretched Eye, and he says it's basically a journey through a series of old silos as you work your way to confront a group of SIVA-infected splicers. I'm sure regular Destiny players will really appreciate the fact that there are some random elements. Each time you play it, it might be a different path through these silos. Now, they did talk about skeleton keys, which I covered already. So you're going to pick up these skeleton keys, right? At the end of every strike, there's going to be a horde chest. You could then choose to use a skeleton key if you have one, if you want that strike-specific loot, whether it's a piece of weapon or a piece of weapon, whether it's a piece of armor or weapon. Let's say you're looking for an Amago loot and you got some skeleton keys. Only use those when you complete a Vex-related strike. Now, he also goes on to mention that you can only hold up to five skeleton keys. So you get your keys, hold on to them, and then when you get that specific strike that you like and you want something, use that key and have a chance to get that piece of loot. 
Then they finish off the article with just talking about how they're excited and they really like the Rise of Iron record book. Remember, Rise of Iron record book is what's going to track our progress and give us the Iron Lord gear. My question, and it still hasn't been clarified yet, is the Iron Lord gear we get from the record book, is that going to be 385? Is it going to be higher? Is it going to be based off the smart loot system? Or is it just something like Spout Racing, where it was just uh, three defense and then uh, we got to infuse it with something we like? I don't know. That's it, guys. Let me know what you guys think. Hope you appreciated this video. Drop a like in this video only if you see fit. Follow me on the Twitter at Matron. Check out my stream, usually on YouTube. And that's it. I'm out of here like Vladimir.